According to some critics, Paul hijacked Christianity. He preached an entirely different gospel than Jesus. We're asked why Paul's teachings and tone are so different than what we read from Jesus in the four gospels. And plus, there are times that it seems that Paul and Jesus are at odds with each other. Critics will often say that modern Christians aren't really Christians, but they're Paulinites. Now, one natural response would be to say that Paul had a lot more to say about the meaning of the death and resurrection of Jesus, and Jesus wasn't just going to come out and say exactly what his death would accomplish. He was rather cryptic about it. But another response would be, is their teaching really all that different? Because there are literally dozens of times where Paul and Jesus are on the same page. Let's just look at a few. God can be referred to as Abba Father. We're to give God what belongs to God. We're to bless those who curse us and love our enemies. We're to live peaceably with all men. Love fulfills God's law. We're to remain alert until Christ's coming. We're not to judge others. All foods are clean. Salvation is open to the Gentiles. We're to be wise as serpents regarding what's good and as innocent as doves regarding evil. The kingdom of God is offered to those of low status. Ungodly men seek a sign. The gospel will offend many people. We're called to be trustworthy stewards who will one day be judged by Jesus. We're to expect mistreatment and persecution in kingdom work. Remaining single is a gift from God. Divorcing a woman to marry another woman is adultery. People must take care to not cause other people to stumble. Those that preach the gospel should be financially supported. We're to practice the Lord's Supper or communion. Faith can move mountains. Our earthly temple is made with hands, but we shall inherit a temple not made with hands. If we give, it shall be given back to us. Kingdom work is accompanied by signs and wonders. Knowledge of Jesus' identity comes from divine revelation. Rejecting God's messenger is the same thing as rejecting God himself. Jesus is one day going to return, and the day of the Lord is going to come unexpectedly. We must return evil with good. We're not supposed to worry. Jesus shed his blood for us. The law is established. Mankind is inherently sinful. And the kingdom of God is to be the believer's central focus. Woo! Now that's a long list. Much of it comes from a great book by Paul Rhodes Eddy and Greg Boyd called The Jesus Legend. Highly recommend you get it. I will put a link in the description down below. So did Paul really preach a message so different than Jesus? I think we've seen that's not really the case. There's also the fact that Paul spent 15 days with Peter. This happened three years after his conversion. As skeptical New Testament scholar Bart Ehrman says, it defies belief that Paul would have spent two weeks with Jesus' closest companion and not learned something about him. What Paul would have learned would include what Jesus taught. Paul relied much on oral tradition that preceded him, and on many occasions Paul speaks of passing on teachings that he picked up from others. Going back to Paul's letter to the Galatians, we read that 14 years later, he returns to meet John, Peter, and Jesus' own brother James. He submits his gospel to them out of concern that maybe he was teaching the wrong message. But rather than being rejected by these men who personally knew Jesus, they actually endorsed his message and his mission to the Gentiles. The only thing they asked him to do is is that he would remember the poor, which Paul says he was very eager to do, and it's very interesting to note that the apostles actually trusted Paul to collect offerings for the poor saints affected by the famine that was happening in Jerusalem. Also, the Corinthian church is familiar with Peter and Jesus' brothers, so they could have cross-checked Paul's message with them. While Paul's main interest was teaching on the meaning of Jesus' death and resurrection, he very clearly echoes and alludes to many traditions attributed to Jesus in the Synoptic Gospels, sometimes directly so. He says, not I, but the Lord. Moreover, the Jesus of the Gospels often spoke of his imminent and voluntary death, and Paul insists that if a person could be made right with God by keeping the Ten Commandments and God's law, there would be no reason for Christ to die. If Jesus really thought that a person could have eternal life simply by following Moses, then why think it necessary to undergo a seemingly suicidal mission? People could simply be Torah-observant Jews, and that would have been enough. But Jesus, as presented in the Gospels, apparently didn't think that was enough. To create a wedge between Jesus and Paul is just based on a really poor reading of the Gospels and the Apostles' letters. 